Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Creator Crush, the show where we talk to amazing creators who make rad things that we love. Tonight on the show, we are joined by podcaster, game designer, political commentator, and half of the Billboard hit producing comedy duo of Night Attack, Justin Robert Young. Welcome to the show, Jury. How are you? Oh, man. I'm doing great. It's a lovely uh, afternoon here in Oakland. Nice, nice, Oakland. See, everybody we've talked to so far is from out west, and they're bringing sunshine to our, our dark, dismal 9 p.m. Saying, show. It's already dark here. It's sad. I will I will say this. Uh, uh, you guys are currently in the path of a hurricane, which, although uh, very uh, you know, something that you very much want to be safe about, I always miss. I miss being in the path of hurricanes. It's <laughs> a weird thing. It's yeah. It's because I grew up. I grew up in Florida, and like uh, yeah, that happens all the time. So you just you know, you kind of get used to it. You kind of uh, miss the race for water and bread. You know. Well, I mean, here's the secret, and I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna level with you. When you live in Florida, and you're growing up there, and you're going to school there, and stuff like that. Uh, really, hurricanes and tropical storms mean more in terms of getting off of school <laughs> because if it's a tropical depression, the school's insurance won't allow school to be open. So uh, it's it's always it's like it was like our snow days because as anybody who's been around hurricanes know, they're very rarely do they actually land where you think they're going to land. Yeah. They have a, they're unpredictable, fickle kind of storms. So it's uh, nine times out of ten, those were actually like the best days of the summer because it would miss, but the hurricane force winds would actually make for a very pleasant day. It's weird, <laughs> but I have like very fond memories of hurricanes. That's, uh, that's, that's what you want, man. Like I, so I missed growing up in Florida. I, I moved to Tallahassee for like college. So I, did, I just got my to condolences. Finish. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, good fine times on Tennessee Street. Let me tell you. Um, but so you, so you, you were, you, did you grow up in Florida? Or did you spend your whole young life there, or did you bounce around? Uh, yeah, from like third grade on, uh, yeah. I moved around a lot as a little kid, and then uh, pretty much was raised in uh, Broward County, just north of uh, Miami, just oh. uh, just west of uh, Fort Lauderdale, or yeah, Fort Lauderdale Beach. Nice, nice. So I just <laughs> funny enough, I lived in North Florida, but I worked for the Department of Corrections. So I know that there's a Broward Correctional Institution. Uh, I know all the maps of the. No, we got a, There's a great jail down there. Like there's a jail literally right on the intercoastal. So like it's it's probably the worst because if you're in jail, well, all you can do is hear people like just lighten it up on the intercoastal all night. Like that's got to suck worse than just being out in a field somewhere. No, you're not. You're not wrong. That is that. Is, that would be a fate worse than death. Maybe having to enjoy your to box, that. plebe. Yeah, have fun. When hurricanes come down there, man, they put inmates in vans and just drive them around. It's a it's a pretty fascinating system. That's uh, dangerous. I yeah. actually heard a harrowing story um, from somebody that was from. It was a bunch of South Floridians that are now here in Oakland, and a dude told me a story. Uh, about how he had, uh, like, literally was just parked in the wrong place. But the parking cop looked up, you know, his license and registration just because she had to, found out she, that he had an, a warrant for, apparently there's this, like, route. If you drive from Florida to uh, New Orleans, there's a stretch of highway in Alabama where you will 100% always get pulled over if you have Florida plates because of, uh, it's like a pill route. Oh. So, like, if you're, like, transporting, because, uh, man, we're getting real uh, real fast here on the Creator <laughs> Crush podcast. But, like, no, this is great. Florida has a very lax pill mill kind of laws, i.e., Florida's the problem that we have. Florida's the reason why we have an opioid addiction in America. Yet another thing that my home state is uh, known for. But if you're driving, you get stopped all the time. So apparently this dude who got popped for having a small amount of recreational drugs on him at the time thought that that was something that had been cleared up. But as it turned out, 
the lawyer that he hired in Alabama went out of business before oh, his court case got there. And of course, nobody ever notified him. So he gets rung up on this warrant here in Oakland. And this is the very longest way I can get to this part of the story, which is what I was fascinated by. <laughs> How you get a prisoner from Oakland to Alabama, where he needed to go. And by the way, he needed to serve like a week in jail. <laughs> oh my God. Like, it was nothing, right? It was like the smallest amount of time. And you can't just say, oh, okay, well, don't worry. Let me buy myself a plane ticket, I'll fly to jail so I can knock out this week and a half. <laughs> they put you in a van. There's a service. It's like prisoner transport system or something. I forget. It's a very blah name. But they literally just are like Uber for prisoners. <laughs> That's supposed uh, to say Uber. It, well, you know, it is. But you don't know where you're going, like how long you're going to be in that van because they're basically just, they're going to stop for every prison that wants to uh, pick, you know, have a, another prisoner picked up if they have the space. Ew, oh that's so creepy. So they just take this crazy, like, family circus route <laughs> around the country Partridge to family. any place that wants to drop off a prisoner. And here's the other screwed up thing. Uh, there's no guarantee for bathroom breaks. They don't stop anywhere but prisons. Uh, so you're never going to get out unless you're going. You're like they're stopping at a prison. And each prison where they pick people up has the right to refuse the prisoners that are in the transport van from using the bathroom. Oh, my what? gosh. Why? <laughs> it's a weird thing. It's a very, very weird thing. But uh, yeah, no. And that and like they charge some ridiculous amount to to the prison systems. It's like you know, $3,000 per prisoner when it's like, they could probably charter a plane <laughs> at that, at those rates and just fly people where they need to go. And he I had mean, to serve like a week. Does he not get time served from being in the van? Driving? Yeah. Nope. Oh nope. Oh my gosh. It's until you check in. It took him a week and a half just to get to Alabama. <gasps> that poor guy. Where did they stay? Like, do they just keep them in the van? Yep. Hoop in the corner. In the van. Oh my God, are you serious? Really have to go every once in a while. They'll let you, they'll have like water bottles. You're going to pee in a bottle uh, in front of everybody. Uh, well, <laughs> Much by the way, easier with your, for a with guy. With your hands and legs uh, shackled. Oh, that's not easy, man. That, like, I feel like that violates some sort of... Uh, human rights? Yeah, yeah that's all we have. <laughs> I mean, probably, but you know, <laughs> no one's really going to look at... I mean, like... These guys, some of them are there for murder. Some of them are there for lesser stuff. So nobody really is going to cape up and be like, but who will speak for the murderers? <laughs> right, I was yeah. going to say, do they put like, the, the murder death killers in the van with like Bobby two times? Yep. That's yep. Enjoy oh, my if God. you got to get from point A to point B, there's no Uber X for, <laughs> for just the murderers. <laughs> Everyone's in the same van. Oh, my gosh. This is like oh, Con no. Air, but like the low budget yes. version. It's yeah. exactly Con Air. Yeah. Really it's exactly good. Con Air, but across with Griswold's family vacation. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I feel like there's a movie in this somewhere. And and also I'd like to say that I have learned more at the beginning of this show than I've learned at the beginning of any creator crush we've done so far. Well, <laughs> you know, this is why people come to me. It's yeah. yet another area of expertise. Uh, not only do I do uh, tech news and politics and comedy, but I also know about the woe of the modern prisoner. Yeah, you, you have like 70 projects running at any given time. And yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> and it's, it's, there's got to be some sort of pressure when you kind of make, not your whole living, you make a lot of your living work, like talking into a microphone. Like, I feel like there's, there's a lot of pressure to just produce. Uh, you don't get to do what I do if you don't already talk a lot. I don't think there's a lot of shy wallflowers who have a million podcasts. Yeah, that's um, true. So, luckily, I'm a loudmouth who likes to hear himself talk. Yeah, it's, we're all a little bit narcissistic in doing this. You know, just yeah. a smidge. Look no, at me. I'm I just can a say lot things. of bit. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that makes sense with the birds now. Uh, oh, that that birds are narcissistic animals. Yes, I don't. I they don't do know. look in the They're mirror loud. a lot. <laughs> They're loud. 
<laughs> yeah, no, there is a lot of personality traits yeah. uh, uh, between me and, and, and my sweet birds. Some people look like they're dogs. You, you behave like your bird. It makes perfect sense. Uh, that's true. That's yeah. true. Right yeah. down to the fact that I poop on the floor. <laughs> yeah, which, you know, uh, it's fine. Speaking of poop on the floor, how was Dragon Con? <laughs> no, Dragon Con was great. Dragon Con was was fantastic. I didn't see any poop this year, but uh, you know, so fingers crossed for next year. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it was it, Dragon Con's always amazing. It's it's just kind of a a, 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 a ritualistic family experience. Dragon Con <laughs> every year, it's it's so fun. It's like finding your tribe. Me and Ash have been a few times, and we've attended uh, Night Attack every time we've gone. It's always Yay. been a freaking blast. Uh, but yeah, it's like you, you find your tribe, man. It's the one place where you can dress like however you want and feel accepted, you know? <laughs> Which is mostly well, undressed. Yeah, right. Well, there's that. I mean, look, there's a lot of, uh, a friend of mine was asking like, oh, so what's like the thing at Dragon Con? And I'm like, well, I mean, you're going to see some, like a lot of real life a- anime titty. Like there's just <laughs> a lot of, like there's, there's a lot of like just out there kind of stuff. But but at the same time, it's like that's that's kind of obviously a very reductive and uh, likely chauvinistic view of it. But like uh, in in reality, there's a lot of the thing I love the most about Dragon Con is effort. You know, everybody is putting on effort. There's a reason why for co- for pro cosplay, it is the Super Bowl. It is where you go to be seen, uh, you know, by your peers and be judged and supported by your peers, and that's. You know, that trickles down. Now, when I was first going, cosplay was good, right? <laughs> but now, the stuff that you'll see on, like, a Thursday, or now I'm even hearing, like, Wednesday nights, wow. is the stuff that you would see on Saturday night five years ago. And, and the stuff that you see on Saturday night is better than movie props. Like, there was a Thanos there this year that looked like you're like well jesus if, if somebody could do this why did they use cgi like, right this guy looks amazing <laughs> what they don't tell you is that guy took like a million hours to put that together well of course yeah but but that's the point right yeah, yeah, is yeah. that everything even if it's you know uh, uh sexy man or lady bodies in skimpy clothes that are that are expertly made that look exactly like the unrealistic uh, uh, figures that are depicted in movies and comic books <laughs> and, and uh, anime, like that's that that is effort too. Everything is effort. Oh yeah, and that's what I love about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the Most drinking. Of... Sorry, did I mention the... the drinking? <laughs> oh gosh. That's, yeah. Me me in a t-shirt drinking, uh, appreciating all the effort that everybody else put in. That's what I like the most. Like walk in semi prepared to talk into a mic occasionally, but other than that, mostly drinking. Uh, I mean, look, I showed up to for the, in a record, a record. I, I showed up to a majority of my panels not half in the bag, which uh, <laughs> is, was a real change for me. You you, you really you handled it Turn well, though. Order. I watched a few on on Facebook because we weren't able to go this year, but luckily they broadcasted a lot of them. And I, you know, you 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 couldn't tell. You just owned the room. It was really well done. Oh well, thank you. Yeah, I yeah, greatly yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, it was it was fantastic. When was the first year that you went? Because you you guys so you guys did Night Attack at Dragon Con in like 2010, but like that I think that was the first one because that was when we were there and it was like yeah. in a smaller room like up on the the Hyatt or something. And uh, but when, uh, yeah, in, in the so. Hilton. If you were there before the Crystal Ballroom, yes. that was the first year we did one show in the podcast room which was up in the hilton area yeah um and then after that they were like you know and that was a big thing because we didn't know how many people were going to show up it was the first time that like we were doing a con we had no idea really beyond our chat room who was going to show up we really didn't have a lot of expectations and man lo and behold it was just uh out of the box, like the the organizers of the of the podcast track were like, uh, like we had to turn away, effectively like two times that room. Oh wow! Uh, and and that really changed our view of night of of then NSFW show. Yeah, uh, it, it changed our view of it because I don't think Brian or I really had any expectations. It was just like this. You know, this this kind of thing that always came fairly easy, 
because we liked joking with each other. Um, we didn't really know each other before. In fact, we did. We didn't know each other at all before we started doing the show. So every, if you watch from the earliest BB Live show to now, it is effectively a documentary of my entire relationship with Brian Brush. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Your weekly phone call recorded together and capturing this, Basically, this growth. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, there, there's, and, and to be honest with you, like I say documentary literally because there is probably as much, if not more footage than you would use in a documentary. Uh, and, and everything that we have done off of a camera is probably about comparable to if you were shooting a documentary of Brian and I. <laughs> How did you guys meet if that's where you kind of grew to know each other? We met through magic. So there was a, uh, there was a time that I was writing and doing podcasts for a site called itricks.com. It was <laughs> a magic blog, and that is ta-da, not the gathering. Uh, so... I, I, I was the editor. I was writing that blog and I was doing all the podcasts and, and I had co-created it with uh, Andrew Maine, who was the publisher. And uh, one day uh, I was just in my apartment in Margate, Florida. And, uh, I'm going to get rid of Davie, Florida. And for whatever reason, I feel like I need to clarify that for people. Uh, <laughs> great way to distinction. podcast along. Yeah, I know. For re- super local. Uh, big shout out to the 954. Uh, all right. So anyway, my buddy, my, my roommate comes up and, and he was a huge fan of Revision 3. Loved Dignation. And he was like, hey, Revision 3 has a magic show now. You should cover that on the blog. And so I did. And uh, Brian, who was uh, rare for a magician, very technologically focused, uh, knew of the blog already. I hit him up to do an interview. Uh, and so we did. There was also another element that was like very briefly kind of cemented my respect in Brian's eyes, uh, where there was a brief message board controversy about a very early Scam School episode. And uh, I reached out to Brian. Brian let me know, you know, that uh, the, the, the controversy was about whether or not he had stolen a trick. Oh, and Lord. so I reached out to him and I was like, hey, what's up with this? And he's like, oh, that's stupid. Uh, the guy who they think I stole a trick from, I taught him that trick that he went and published somewhere else with my blessing. But I still get to teach my own trick uh, on, on Scam School. And so, and, and if you ask Brian, Brian will know this sentence. If you ask him about the first time that I wrote about that controversy on iTricks, the sentence was... Uh, Everybody calm down. Both Brian Brushwood and Daniel Garcia are viceroys in the kingdom of awesome. And <laughs> that, that was, well I worded. think, the moment where Brian was like, okay, this guy's cool. Uh, I wound up doing a couple more interviews with him. And then one day he was looking to expand kind of scam school. And he hits me up and says, hey, look, uh, I have no idea what this is going to be, but I want to do live streams and uh, if you want to be a part of it, then cool. So he did a, a couple that I couldn't be a part of just because I was traveling. And then one day uh, he was like, oh, I'm going live. And so I called in and it was such a blast. It was so fun. And I told him, hey, man, whenever you go live, let me know. I'll be there. And, you know, that was pretty much it. That was that was all she wrote. Uh, uh, we started doing BB Live Show regularly on Tuesdays and then at a, at a certain point uh, we went to, uh, we got noticed by twit by way of a mutual friend, uh, Colleen, who was working there at the time. Uh, and then really the rest is all documents. Man, this is a, this is a history lesson. Cause I'm remembering all of these things. I'm like, Oh yeah. BB live show. Oh, Colleen. I remember her. She built the Skyposaurus or whatever. Like, way absolutely. Back in the day. No, and by the way, she right now is one of the most uh, uh, respected and feared uh, video engineers in Silicon Valley. She oh works at Facebook. That's, yeah, that's no, super she's, cool. She's brilliant and amazing. There is no part of Colleen that I don't love. Oh, Yay. yeah. Yeah, like back in the day, you knew like she was running the show because Twit was, I mean, they were always live all the time. Like she walked in the room and it was, you know, she was handling everything. Everything. <laughs> She was a boss. Welcome to the Colleen Show, where we praise Colleen. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, that's super cool. So, like, back before BB Live Show, you mentioned you were doing podcasts, like, um, 
on on magic yeah. and stuff. Where like where did you get interested in podcasting as a as an art form or as a way to put your yeah, art form. It feels so weird to call it that. Uh, no, no, no. I would say that. I yeah. Mean, mostly because I make my living doing it, and I want to get away with calling myself an artist. But yeah. I would agree with you. You're like, oh, uh, awesome. Yeah. But where did it so start? Yeah. I used to. I got a degree in journalism, and I decided uh, to immediately waste it. Um, I, <laughs> I was, uh, I was. I had an opportunity to to kind of work my way up through news, newspapers. I had. You know, the, the job that, that I, I could have had right out of college was covering the police in Utica, New York. And I decided that I was going, something that I was doing while I was at the newspaper was sketch comedy. So I decided that I was going to move to New York City for a year and try sketch comedy with some of the guys that I had graduated with, though, and I was, I was also doing it with in college, that we were going to go pro, so to oh, say. Wow. And so we did. And we moved out, and I had to get a day job, obviously. So I was working where I was a professional line waiter. A I, line waiter? I had to wait in line for a living. That's uh, a thing? Yeah. So here's what the, the actual <laughs> job was. It was a, a architectural expediting firm. So let's say you want to build a building in New York City, right? Sure. Uh, there's a mil- the Department of Buildings is a Byzantine, ridiculous operation where uh, everything is just uh, uh, so complicated. Like there's Government. a million different rules and you've <laughs> got to get a million different stamps on a million different things. So architecture firms very often hire companies like the one that I worked for where uh, a, a architect who was very familiar with the building code would review their... Uh, plans and then mark them up and so either i would be taking well no nine times out of ten i would i I would just be taking the finalized versions as blessed by our internal architect who was my cousin which is why i got the job (laughs) and i would then go to one of the department of buildings in manhattan queens Staten island uh bronx or uh manhattan did i say manhattan twice whatever all the the, (laughs) Brooklyn. I would, I would go, I would go to all of them or to yeah, all of them eventually. And I would wait in line and I would wait, wait. And I would oh eventually God. hand it over to the person and they would either stamp it or tell me that I needed another thing. And then I would bring it back and either <laughs> send it, you know, send copies off to whoever I needed to. So push comes to shove. I was talking to Andrew Maine one day and he was like, oh, you know that iTunes is adding podcasts. And I'm like, what's a podcast? <laughs> and uh, he's like, oh, there's like radio shows, like time shifted radio shows. And I'm like, oh, well, that's really cool. Because at, that, at the time I was really into talk radio. I was really into XM. And I had a little mobile XM thing that I would listen to. Mm-hmm. But then podcasting came along and I just got obsessed with the Ricky Gervais show. It was like the first podcast that I listened to and I would download it to my iPod and, uh, uh, you know, I just kind of got obsessed with it and then, uh, eventually wound up, uh, you know, eschewing my career as a professional line waiter and the sketch comedy group dissolved. So I moved back home to South Florida to work with Andrew and, start this, you know, among other things, a new media venture in blogging and podcasting. So that was, that went from really fulfilling waiting in line person to moving back home. Well, you know, it was, it's weird. It's weird because it was a lot more freedom to not work for, not to do a job I hated. And, uh, and, and also it was good to get the, uh, uh, F out of New York because things had kind of gotten depressing uh, with the comedy group and everything. And uh, uh, it was just, it was a good move. And also it, it basically, it, it effectively set me on a course where I, you know, would basically be always doing my own thing forever, even if I was taking another paycheck. So that was a, a, a very transformative moment in my life. But it, it, that was the first time that I fell in love with podcasting and, 
I did a few kind of like experimental ones, but the first one that I really did regularly was the Magic Week in Review for for iTricks.com. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I imagine like you you went home and you said, "Mom, I'm going to talk on the internet for a <laughs> living," and she was like, "Good for you, Justin. That's how you do um, it." <laughs> you know, it's funny. My mom. Um, I love my. I have a very good relationship with my mom. Yeah. I love my mom. Hey. She is. Uh, uh, you know, pretty much my, my inspiration in life. But I also think that at a certain point, she just understood that she couldn't tell me anything, (laughs) you know? So, uh, I, I think whenever, whenever she is, you know, she tries to gently nudge me in directions of like, well, how does this make money? And what's your plan for the rest of your life? Yeah. And I normally, and she's very gentle about it, which I've always appreciated. She's never really crawled up my butt about anything, but, uh, (laughs) Thanks, Jerry's but, mom. <laughs> yeah, no, but she's she's the best. She's always been incredibly supportive. Yeah, uh, we we actually got to see her one year. We were there. She was at Dragon Con. Um, I keep going. She back was. Back. I apologize. Year? No, it was a 2014. Uh, whatever. I just remember she was on the panel. I was like, Justin's mom is awesome. She is rocking this thing. <laughs> um, oh yeah. She's been no, such she a is. good sport in your podcasting history. Um, Oh, you know, being yeah. Michael Rooker's, you know, wife or whatever, too. <laughs> well, I've, I've certainly taken advantage of the fact that my mom, from the earliest time that I've had a cell phone, uh, will never not pick up the phone <laughs> if I yes! call her at any time of night. <laughs> she will always, 100%, I can't think of a time when I've called my mom at any time. <laughs> now, during the day, she'll send me to voicemail. <laughs> at night, in the middle of the night. She will answer that phone every single Aww. time. Uh, uh, but And I have abused that for comedic effect uh, oh, uh, several times, just knowing that she'd pick up and I could take advantage of a confused glory. Uh, That's so mean. You gave your mom a heart attack. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. She always knows. I mean, like, she always like, like, hello? <laughs> and I, I'm never like. I'm never like, like, oh, mom, my leg sawed off. Like, I, I'm always like, mom, 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 you're on the internet. Uh, uh, you think Michael Rucker's got a big dick? And, and she'll be like, I don't know. And so it's fun. <laughs> that is that is a great time, man. I, it, it, so I'm trying to figure out where to segue from Michael Rucker's yeah, Michael. Uh, giant wiener. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, so Mom's wonderful. <laughs> She is. No, that's that's a uh, hundred and fifty percent. There is no no doubt about that. <laughs> so, man, moving on to like the the newer stuff that you've been doing because you've been cranking yeah, out a crazy. lot of like you stuff, just Justin Not on sleeping. the mic stuff. Um, yeah. How much more challenging is it for you to just sit there and riff with yourself uh, <laughs> than having like somebody now, to bounce off of? Now it is. Now it is less of a problem. Um. You know, uh, when I first started, it's it's awkward. It's hard. It's a very unnatural thing. And it's hard to make a very unnatural thing sound natural, uh, if that makes any sense. Uh, so, look, you have to be very sure of your own opinions. You have to be you have to kind of turn off a little bit of your second guessing. Uh, but then that next level is kind of anticipating what the audience is thinking and, and trying to, if it makes sense internally, kind of uh, uh, have a conversation between you and the audience where you're playing both parts. Uh, and that's, and that's, and that's weird. It takes a lot. I, I wanted to learn how to do it. I, I'm, I've always been a tremendous fan of one mic radio. Uh, I, I think it's something that takes tremendous skill and, and, and think whatever you will about people like, you know, Colin Cowherd or, or Rush Limbaugh, uh, <laughs> But like it, to, you, that is uncommon. It's un, it, to make it sound for you to listen to those people and say I hate their opinions takes tremendous skill. That you're not like, what is this person doing? Why do they sound like a weirdo? <laughs> because if you listen to bad one mic radio, it's like bad improv. Nothing's worse. Like nothing's worse than just the guy. Like, and this is anybody who listens to sports talk radio in local markets knows. <laughs> a hundred percent that bad one mic radio y- you better hope that you're into the information they're talking about <laughs> because you're certainly not listening to it for the entertainment value i've actually never thought of it that way because i talk to myself pretty much all day and into the mirror 
constantly. So <laughs> it never occurred to me that it would be hard to not talk out loud about nothing. Oh, I'll tell you what, try to do it. it <laughs> and I, I encourage you to do it. Not, not in the way of saying like, Oh, well look how hard it is. But it's like, it is a skill that I think has helped me a lot. And it, it's made me think about structure and confidence and diction and, uh, breathing and pacing. Oh God. And, yeah. Uh, uh, there's, there's a lot that kind of goes into it that you don't realize because it just sounds like somebody's having a conversation. Yeah. And you do it, you do it really well. Like your pacing is, is great. I mean, you've, you've, you've gotten really good at it. Cause I was listening to like your previous iteration of the jury show years, like a year or two ago, I think might be when you first yeah. launched it, you know? And then now like, it's a different show. Like in your relaunch, it, it feels like you've got what you want to talk about right out of the gate. You, it's, it's really well done. Um, but the, like you, you live stream them now. Um, yeah. Does the chat tend to distract you when you're doing it? Do you minimize the chat? Do you get it out of your way? Do you embrace it when you're doing your one mic thing? Because um, I know like pre, prior to you, you engage for sure, and afterward you engage the community for sure. But during the show, oh yeah, it seems like they're kind of out of your peripheral or your peripheral vision, so you can just kind of say what you want without thinking about what the chat is saying. Well, you know, it's and this is kind of next level stuff in my in my opinion or at least it, it took me like going one level before i could get to this level that the chat is an echo of what you're saying nine times out of ten mm -hmm. one time out of ten they've got a question that they that is relevant to where you're going that you have <laughs> something to say about and that would fit seamlessly into it and then those feel like magic right those are that's where if you can pick that up and weave that in, that's like juggling and then somebody throws a banana and you're able to just <laughs> juggle that banana into it. Um, so I always keep it big, but I have blinders on nine times out of ten. And then, you know, like I, like I said, it, it really is a conversation between you and the audience where you're playing both parts. When it's time for the audience's part, I'll look over at the chat. I'll see if they have anything. If they don't, then I'll just say what I think they want to hear or they, the question <laughs> they want to ask or the, 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 the obvious thing that they're thinking in their heads. And hopefully I get that right. But every once in a while, there's something there and I can weave it in. Or there's a really funny one-liner. You know, that's, that's, that's the other thing that you always look for is if there's some kicker that you're like, oh, God, this is, this is you know harnessing the powers of the earth. <laughs> There's always that one person in the chat that just delivers the funny. Oh yeah, they're they're usually that one, and they do it repeatedly. So um, you can well, you know, some yeah, absolutely, uh, uh, and and a lot of times, which which you know, the the wisest thing anybody ever told me about uh, audiences was the sage like uh, Tom Merritt, who who said that you you get the chat room you deserve. Yeah, and, that's true. Yeah, and you know, uh, I hope. I strive to cultivate and respect and welcome a chat room that's very funny and insightful. Yeah, the, one of the things, like, I, I've watched, I've been able to watch more recently, but, like, the way, the way you handle trolls is an art form. If you could talk <laughs> about the, the goose, because it, is, it oh, is an amazing yeah. tactic. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I love trolls uh i i think that trolling is a is a oft misunderstood pursuit uh and i also think that it's kind of uh, it is it is like man i don't know how to put it, it, it it's like the home version of trying out for a play right oh, like it is it's like a very low stakes base awful oft, oftentimes awful way that you want to express yourself artistically and you need validation and so you're trying to do it in the ugliest way possible but and it goes back to what we were saying about dragon kind about effort right it doesn't take <laughs> effort to troll and it takes an understanding of humanity to troll because you have to understand what gets under people's skin but the next level beyond that is its validation Right. So the way that you can feel validation as a troll is if you say something and then you can read the face of the person that you've said it to and either audibly or non-verbally, they 
give you the reaction that you want, right? You're, you're, you're extracting validation from them, you know, without them having a choice about it. So the you, only way, there's one way to make that not the, not the outcome. And that is to A, change the subject and B, make it not funny. Like the first, and so like, uh, there's a great story that they, if you ever have Brian on, he will tell you that, uh, all of a sudden, one day he was actually here in Oakland. He's actually on this roof that I'm talking to you on right now. Uh, Hello, Brian. <laughs> yeah, he all of a sudden starts getting all these YouTube comments, and they're all talking about how he should be ashamed uh, for what he did to that 13 year old girl in San Antonio. Oh, I remember this. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, and yeah. so he's like, what the fuck is this? Like, and it's a ton of them, right? So there's some back channel communication to our, our, you know, our little army to like start flagging and downvoting those comments immediately. Uh, and then we're just trying, and we find out that Brian has been pedo bombed, meaning on 4chan, there was a random roll and, and we saw the thread. <gasps> It was literally just, uh, it was, it was literally just a, uh, a, a random, uh, uh, like they just kept naming people and then ran a random number generator and Brian just won the unlucky lottery. And so they all went and referred to the same issue as if there was this burgeoning story. Oh my God. That, hoping that Brian, again, this is extracting what they want. They hope that Brian would say the worst thing you can say in that situation, which is, I'm not a pedophile. Oh, <laughs> like, my God. It's the most natural thing to say. But this is one of those, like, when did you stop beating your wife kind of things where there's <laughs> no good answer. Uh, so what we decided to do is, again, you have to make it not funny. So we made a video. We shot it in my apartment where he, uh, we awarded him with the medal for winning the 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 uh four chan award the <laughs> slash b award uh and he said like hey guess what folks uh i won i won i won the lottery uh four chan attacked me and they said i was all sorts of awful things uh, uh but thank you very much i would like to thank you guys for this award of course we wrote the the, the slash on the b wrong just because one good turn deserves another uh, and uh, uh and then on top of it like uh but also by the way did you guys wind up getting the puzzle on that scam school because it was a really good puzzle and i'm uh, thank you because we really need the views uh so it was like you got to take the air out and make it not fun so the thing that i do on my channel is periodically, specifically when you're talking politics, which I do often, you get people that have awful, like just leading questions because they want to get you into a thing. And again, right. this is them dictating the subject. So I tell them, look, I'm going to answer any question that you have. Just do me a favor. Before I answer anything, I need something from you. You need to give me a little... <laughs> uh, and now this immediately leads to a few things. Number one, they have no idea how to react. Because <laughs> they've asked me a question and now I'm asking them a question and I'm asking them for something before I give them the thing. This is the biggest lesson of trolling. It 99% of the time, they're not willing to put in the effort. And if you <laughs> knock them off their script, they won't know what to do. So uh, if they're normally like, you know, it, it's, it's some version uh, grosser or more arcane of like, you know, what did you think of Bofa last night? And they just want you to say what's Bofa so they can scream Bofa these nuts. Like it's it's some <laughs> kind of call and response sort of thing. And so if I don't, if I'm, if I'm like, I'll answer it, but first you got to do this. So now all of a sudden they don't know what to do. And then they also don't know how to spell. Eh? <laughs> uh, when I just really, I want them to write H A N K, and so I just keep saying like, "Oh, come on, man! Like, you know, we're just we're here, man. We're just trying to have a good time. I'm willing to answer anything that you have to say. Just go ahead and give me a, just one. I just need one little, 
I just, if you want to give me a, I want to get an answer, just give me a little, eh? like, <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to be hearing this in my sleep. <laughs> so uh, eventually, the uh, uh, if I know that they're playing along, and this is when I know I have a convert, is when they play along. Like, because they, they'll write, they'll write various versions of like Hawk or, you know, H E N K, and then eventually they'll get to Hank, and I'll give them a shitty answer to their dumb question, and then they'll move on. It's so it's so well done, and it just you're right. Like it takes the wind out of their sails immediately. There's zero response most of the time. Yeah, most of the time there's zero response. But then also it it what what they don't realize is they think they're here to infiltrate. And then, not unlike Tom Cruise in Eyes Wide Shut, he <laughs> realizes that they are indeed the show. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, shoot. Skype, Skype broke. Skype broke. No! It did that last time, didn't it? Hold on, I'm getting back in there. Annoyed the piss out of us for the first couple times. Well, remember that the the rule of the internet is whoever changes the subject wins. So just be willing to change the subject more than they are. Uh, So, and you can't pause. So if they're like, you know, you're a a, a girl on the internet smash. So I'm sure you get all sorts of gross comments about you and, and, you know, various, you know, body parts or uh, practices. Not as much as as you would think, thankfully. (laughs) Well, let, let's let's say, for example, that that's something that happens, right? Yeah. Uh, if you immediately, you're like, oh, so what do you think about the Tar Heels, right? Blech. It doesn't doesn't matter what they are or Duke, whatever. Don't keep <laughs> follow me here, Jesus. <laughs> just just Ed, just follow along. It's okay. Follow. I'm not. I don't know your life story, so I'm just I'm, I'm doing approximated guessing here. Uh, <laughs> So, but literally, the more that you change the subject, that this is the rule of the internet. If you're answering questions in good faith by somebody who doesn't have good faith, you've lost. That's a, I actually like that. Did somebody quote him on that, please? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Actually, they dropped me from the call for a minute because Skype broke, but I'm back now. Hi, everyone. So oh, there's a good. Small, oh, no. Yeah, yay, Skype is the best. There's a small blip in the middle of the show, but we're good. Everybody's good. We're fine. I mean, so, as long as we got that I'm not, that I am a Duke fan, I think yeah, that, that was, was in the there. Gist of that whole thing. Okay, That's that was, fine. Although it's probably not something that you should admit out <laughs> Oh, oh, just now. Oh, there's such a war going on now. So oh, I'm, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. The, 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 the success of Duke, I'm sure, is not enough to <laughs> keep you warm at night. <laughs> but you, you had me at the birds. And so, your wife, is her name Ashley? She, it is, yeah. Okay, that's other. She had these dragon shoes on last yes. year. And that I was wanted. Our, that was our. We got married. Oh my God, she they were me. so cool. And Steven was like, Ashley, you have to go ask her about her dragon shoes. And I didn't know who she was at the time. And I didn't get to catch <laughs> up to her. And I'm just like, I like your shoes. Strange lady at Dragon Con, so this is acceptable. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah, no, she would have loved talking about him. I think she got him on Etsy. They were, they were an Etsy lady that does crazy custom shoes. That's fantastic. Well, a year later, if you could tell her that some strange internet lady likes her shoes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. No, I'm sure. Uh, 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 yeah, no, she will love it. She loves talking about those shoes. Yeah, I, In fact, uh, I think if, if, if it weren't for the fact that at some point she is going to trip on something and break them, she would yeah. wear them every day. High heels are the devil. The, yeah. Yeah. Be. Well, I think the, the high heels are one thing. The other thing is the fact that they are bizarrely weighted Holy because she has a gigantic crystal and a full dragon on on both of the shoes. So not only does she have to balance, she has to kind of counterbalance so she doesn't fall forward. Day wear. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No. Very. Very. Super cash beach wear for right. uh, <laughs> for Ashley Paramore. <laughs> very fitting so man i know we're, we're running low on time but i do have like one more question it's kind of um it's it's from our chat as well as something that we had written down early and it's related sure. to yeah to px3 uh politics politics okay. politics how on earth do you manage to stay as centered as you do uh amongst everything that's going on right now because one thing that you manage on that show that i think no other major media outlet can handle is like 
just talking about things with the like with the eye of everything being absurd. Like from both sides, it seems like everything's <laughs> a freaking disaster. And you're just so well, level. And how how do you? It's it's impressive, I guess, that how you you manage most to impressive sit in the middle. Well, of thank that you. And, I, yeah, I, I I do appreciate that. Um, I think it helps that I'm a former journalist, and I think both of those words matter the most because, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the journalism element, there is nothing that I think uh, makes you more uh, more of a contrarian than getting burnt as a reporter, which I've had happen a couple times. Uh, and the only time that you get burnt, and this is what a good editor will beat, and a good you know professor, if you're going to J school, will try to beat the living uh, crap out of you so you stop thinking that you can ever be sure about anything. Uh, there's nothing that you can be sure of unless you see facts in front of you. That's it, right? So if you get into a world of politics, which is so much spin and subterfuge, then very rarely does that happen. So very rarely should you take anything all that seriously. Now, the former part comes in then that I can just watch material roll in and I'm not beholden to these people as sources. And that's another element of it that is very hard because, number one, if you're a reporter and you're talking to campaigns, you're talking to campaign managers, what they say to you personally won't be what they say publicly. What they're giving to you is very obviously spun a certain way. So you have to do your best to try to get the kernel of truth out of it without just being totally used as a PR mouthpiece. Uh, and it grows. I mean, look, it's a complicated situation because you kind of love and hate these people at the same time. Uh, so what I think helps for me is that a i have that training and b i'm not in the middle of it so you know when when you when you look at things uh what what i think is really unfortunate in the situation that we're in right now is that we really don't have an observer class anymore the for you know the internet has brought us so close together that everybody is actively fighting for one yeah. thing or another. You are actively trying to advance the agenda of a politician, which for however noble they might be, they are not beholden to play by the rules. They're not <laughs> beholden to the truth. They're not beholden to uh, you know, the best thing for all parties or the best thing for you even. They are there to advance their agenda, even if it's a noble agenda. So... I, I don't know. That's always been something that I've I've been interested in in general. Uh, I would like to think that that was kind of me as a reporter, and now it's just me as a as a commentator. This that's I it's it's it you is put really... the science in political science, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. Well, I don't know, but I also scream like a strip club DJ and uh, you know <laughs> act like an idiot and you know talk about poop buffets and stuff like that. So most but, but important. That, to be honest, though that. That also was me as a reporter in the newsroom. So, like, that's the one thing I do want to bring. I want to be the authentic person that back when I was a reporter, I would want to make everybody else in the newsroom laugh doing shit like that. Uh, so I want to just do that. I want to just bring that authenticity uh, uh, out into the open. By the way, there are no more... Probably cops might be the only other, like place where black humor is runs as rampant as a newsroom because you can't be that close to the worst elements of society constantly without letting off some of that steam in in the form of humor and 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 that's kind of i think what that might be the other element of it is that obviously this is a world that is so ratcheted up that is so fired up about stuff that i don't know it's just a lot funnier to say that you know, Ron DeSantis went to the poop buffet because he called his opponent, uh, his his black opponent. He said he did he did want his uh, African American opponent to monkey up the progress <gasps> that their predecessor had made. Oh, so Jesus. he had to go to the poop buffet and he had to eat all you can eat poop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand in the age of everything is recorded, everything is recorded. How people can still slip up and say crap like that? 
I mean, look, uh, I, I can I can understand it. Uh, I, I mean, human as a human, oh, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. And and whether or not you're going to say he's uh, a, a racist, which you know very well might be. I, I don't know. I'm sure we can take a DNA sample and see if it matches for racist. But uh, you know, uh, uh, when you talk a lot, and that dude had just been through a primary, uh, he got on television news and then just ate his own butt. You know, he won't be the first. He won't be the last. Yeah. I, I feel like comments like that, though, that's something that you've maybe heard before or said before for it to slip out oh, like that. Yeah, like it's not I a mean, dark... I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if somebody said, well, because also uh, uh, Gillum, his opponent, who is now leading him in the polls, was <laughs> like running fourth in the Democratic primary like weeks before that election. <laughs> so he was a huge surprise. And uh, I would take a wild guess that he was probably not as prepared for Gillum to be there. But also at the same time, I wouldn't be shocked if somebody was just like, just don't say something racist. Don't say something <laughs> racist. Whatever you do, don't say anything racist. And then he gets up there and, and says, he had a trifecta too. Like that was an amazing soundbite because he was like, he said that he was very articulate and uh, he was a great entertainer. And then said that he he would uh, monkey up with the the, oh, the the progress of Florida. So it's like he hit all the. It was yes. it was a concerto of dog whistles. <laughs> and at that point, it doesn't matter what he might have it meant was, it or was, where it he was, heard it. Yeah, it was it was a dog whistle like there's a penny whistle in the Titanic song. <laughs> like that's that's what the dog whistle was like. <laughs> His handler was going, "Oh Jesus, shut up!" Yeah. Oh stop. yeah. Stop. Well, that's that's just one of those things where it's just, you know, what I want to bring out on the show is I want to bring out that element of, hey, look, this is a stage play. No yeah. matter what the stakes are, no matter what the, the issue is, the way that we elect people is by getting your message out in a clear and concise manner and inspiring a populace to vote for you. Uh, and you can look at that cynically, as I often do, or you can look at that as just the reality. and. In the reality of it, you are not doing yourselves any favor, yourself any favor by making racist comments in on West, television in West Virginia. Seconds after. Oh, yeah. Well, no. but even even West Virginia didn't uh, 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 didn't didn't go with um, Blankenship. What's his yeah. Uh, Blankenship? Yeah, yeah. With with cocaine, Mitch and the and the China people. <laughs> that was such a disaster. I, we're we're both. I'm from West. Yeah, yeah, we're we're both from there to some degree. Um, people yeah, grew up there. Yeah, yeah. So it's it was a it was a near and dear thing to us. We're like, yeah. what the crap? They're embarrassing the state again, and it's not that hard. <laughs> well, you know. yeah, West Virginia is, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, it's certainly a an it's interesting, very pretty interesting place. It's a place I've heard that. I've yeah. heard that. I've driven through West Virginia, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's, that's literally okay. everybody's comment is either, "Oh, you're from West Virginia. I used to go to Richmond, which is not West Virginia," or, "Oh, <laughs> no, I've driven right, through West there." Virginia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I, I've spent more time in, in, in Virginia than I have West Virginia. Yeah, Most yeah. people have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I moved to, when I moved to Florida, it was like, how many palm, tree, palm trees do you have in your yard? I was like, I live in Tallahassee. There's like, this is yeah. South Georgia. There's, Concrete. This isn't Florida. This is pretend Florida. It's funny. I was, I was sitting at a bar with somebody that wound up going to Florida, that was at Florida State, and uh, he was a black guy. And I was joking. I'm like, ah, Tallahassee. It's a city built on cocaine and racism <laughs> <laughs> you are not wrong i was very happy to get out you know fine <laughs> i just like no, the governor square mall <laughs> the mall yeah i've actually never been there i troll tallahassee only no. based on uh, uh, uh retellings from friends of mine that went to florida state which by the way plays uh my my beloved uh syracuse orange uh, this weekend and hopefully we can match an upset. I'm very excited for that. Yeah. Well, I hope I hope that it all works out for sure. Well, Jerry, I know I know you were running a, a past your clock, but man, it has been wonderful talking to you. Ash, do you have any last minute questions or anything? I know. Yeah. No, I got I got time. I got time for one more. If you have another question. No, I just I, I would make a comment about you need to go to Tallahassee so you can see the uh, the ball in Wiener Capital while you're <laughs> driving up. Yeah. I mean, it looks like a giant phallus. It's fine. Yeah. It's it's yeah, you know, um, uh, I'll look it up on Google. Yeah, just, yeah, just do Google that. Google just it. like it's just street it's, view. It's fine. 
I don't... can street view it. I'm yeah. sure it's legit. You don't need to go there. It's yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so okay, well, last last question is kind of a fun one, but are you and Brian ever going to release a Night Attack for album? Is that in the works for you down the road? <sighs> yes, almost certainly. When uh, I mean, look, uh, if if I told you that it was going to come out at a certain time, <laughs> uh, I would think less of you if you believe me. Right. Yeah. We've, yeah. we've made so many promises, but. Uh, uh, um, man, what can I say? I I don't know if there will be a Night Attack four uh, uh, before we do another project, and I can give you a Creator Crush exclusive that uh, there might be work on that project when I'm in Austin this weekend. Oh no! Yeah, that that's gonna be Clap great. Hands. Then. Well, yeah, but that would, be, that, that would be that would. That would be that would be another album, another album project. But uh, we there's there's a certain idea that we have that has momentum, unlike many of the things that Brian and I do, which started <laughs> with good ideas that have no momentum. Uh, so uh, so this one seems to be progressing, and I am very very invested in in making it happen because I think it would be really really cool. But we will send hopefully. you donuts if you get that off the ground. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, I would hope that this is something that we could have out before the end of the year. Nice. I would hope. That's what we want to hear. It, uh, it's also actually very vindicating to hear that you have mi- given your audience multiple promises that you haven't kept, because Ash and I have done that over the, the 10 thing. years of, of us together, I think maybe one other idea, and it's probably this show, uh, that we've actually <laughs> delivered to from anyone. One, from one creator to another, uh, uh, shut up. Uh, every, <laughs> every creator should shut up and just put the thing out and never talk about it before you put it out. That's, that's, I think that's what we finally decided on, was we needed to stop talking yeah yeah which is hard when you do a show every week talking generalities and then just do the thing and listen to what the audience says we're gonna do a thing sometime soon yeah Yeah, that's that's the the vagueness that you use that's awesome yeah hey jury man it has been a great time talking to you sir we really appreciate you coming on the show Um, well number one uh, uh absolutely no problem you guys were amazing this was a great chat and i do want to give a big, big, big thank you to Smash because, man, uh, uh, I am I am a a, a a a cat chasing a laser pointer sometimes when it comes to my focus and planning. Dang. And uh, Smash <laughs> made sure made sure that that uh, uh, that I carved out time for this, and and uh, I do I do thank. You you for for making that happen because no otherwise... thank you for not you know blocking me and telling me to gtfo because i was no. <laughs> no 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 it was it was actually necessary because i will very you know i'm 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 prone to like like you're like oh do you want to do the show and i'll say yes in my head and then never respond uh yeah that's that is that is a, an often thing and that is that is a good sign of persistence uh to make it happen so so good job she is she is relentless, you know. That's why we yeah. send her out there. Go get them. Smash. That's good. <laughs> smart, smart. Yeah. No, but yeah, we we really appreciate it because we know you're like psychotically busy and you should probably nap or <laughs> spend time with your yeah. wife's shoes. Yeah. Is there anything I you will. wanna you wanna promote before we let you go? Like uh, tell us what where people can find you, what you're doing. Yeah, just uh Justin R. Young on Twitter and and, uh, uh, you know, Twitch, twitch.tv slash Justin R. Young. Pretty much Justin R. Young everywhere. The yeah. R stands for respect. <laughs> <laughs> also, oh, Robert. I gotta right. change also the Robert. lower third. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. The R, the R stands for restitution. <laughs> <laughs> You're proving that people with three names aren't all serial killers. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Not He's gonna be on that bus shortly. <laughs> yeah, right. No, no, no. Don't ever ride that bus. Well, man, we will let you go. Let you have your evening back. Go enjoy your birds and your family and all the things. And just, uh, yeah, thanks for hanging with us, man. Yeah, we appreciate it. You're awesome. Bye. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Yeah, man. Bye. 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 Hang up on everybody because Skype is dumb. Hold on a minute. We're going to get them back. Frozen face. Where'd she go? Ba-doop, ba-doop, ba-doop. They're unavailable. 
she went pp maybe you could be right there we go there's the jam find it i'm like where the hell is skype and i couldn't find the bubble and it was like joined with justin r young and i'm like no i don't want to call him he just hung up and <laughs> this is weird okay we're back. so I, I made a mistake too i'm used to people not being experienced and not knowing when to hang up but justin was just like boom and i was as soon as he hit it and i noticed that we were alone i i hit it and then yeah. i made everybody go away no it was awesome that's cool <laughs> so that was that was what we do Oh, yes, sure. somebody praised me for being annoying so I can spend the next 10 years validated Hang for being annoying. Yeah, that's actually what you can do. All right, let's yeah. record the tail end of this sucker. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Uh, yeah, here we go. The Skype call is not in the bathroom. <laughs> I think they know me. They do. They're familiar. All right, here we go. <laughs> well, man, that was Justin Robert Young. That was a great time. There was so much to cover. And, Chloe. <laughs> and cloacas. Boy, we started that one off strong. Uh, the, <laughs> there was so much to cover, and we it's fun when you get a creator that has 8 million things going on in their life. That uh, There's a lot of things to cover in an hour. But I think we did it. Did, 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 we, did, we, did do we cover it? some stuff, Steven? What are, you, are you making fun of me now? Is yes. that, what did I say? We covered some stuff. <laughs> Shoot, I'm restarting that. <laughs> You're right. I tend to repeat I think, myself. I think you got distracted and you got stuck in a loop and it was amazing. I hate you so much. I'm gonna cry. You're not even my friend anymore. I'm your bestest friend because you've known me forever. You're a butthole. <laughs> you got holes in your butt. At least one. <laughs> okay. I don't want to know about your holes in your butt. Okay, here we go. Try and take take two. Ash, that was a fun show, right? <laughs> right? It was fantastic. <laughs> thanks, huge thanks to Justin Robert Young for coming on the show and chit chatting with us. There was a lot to cover. We talked about a lot. We had a good time, and it was fun. And Ashley and I are, are spent after talking too much. What? <laughs> what? Okay, I need to start over. We're professionals. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. I won't say anything. You know what I'm gonna do? <laughs> I can't rely on you to say words. I right can now. say words. It'll involve cloaca. That's fine. That's good. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> this is so dumb. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Are we doing horseshoes and hand grenades right now? Or? I don't know. It, well, it was with Jay. It was with Jury. So essentially, yes. Oh, uh, might as well could have been. Okay. <clears throat> huh. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. right, here we go. That was fun, Smash. Justin Robert Young, podcaster, game designer, all the things. Gosh, this is so dumb. I can't do this with you. I can't. The music, the music is just eating my brain. Like, it's it's so peppy. And I've got I've got nothing written down. Oh, I do have something written down. Oh crap, I have show notes. You've got the entire intro, Steven. Why didn't you say that? This was so much better. Why <laughs> didn't you say that? Why did you say, hey, Steven, dummy, you wrote this down like a day ago. Oh, God, I'm literally crying. Oh, gosh. It got hot. <laughs> I don't even know where to start anymore. Where did I lose? Start with we've covered some stuff. I hate you so much. Uh, hey, good news. We're going to be able to do horseshoe and hair needs tomorrow, maybe. Yay, we're not going to die. Where the crap is the cutoff? Hold on, I, I broke this somewhere. Somewhere you in here, a... there should be a thing. Hold on. Actually, yeah. When he, oh, when he said well could have been. Brian okay. was there on the roof <clears throat> with him. I'm like, oh, really? Tell oh, him yeah. he owes me a show. <laughs> Tell him we talked We talked one time. Yeah, thanks for hanging with us, man. Yeah, we appreciate it. You're Will awesome. Do. Bye. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Yeah, man. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Oh, There's nervous. the giggles. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. I got the promo ender. I'm. I, I like. So I thought you would say something, but you didn't. So I kept talking because I never know when you're gonna talk because I can't read your face. Cause Wait I'm, for what? The end? Yeah, I thought you might say something at the end, but if you didn't, that was fine. Thank you to everybody who who subscribed or followed while we were doing this. Yeah, you're awesome. <laughs> um, handful of people I recognize from other chats. Oh, that's uh, cool. From Jury's chat and stuff. So thank you guys. Big, 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 big thank you for coming. Hi, by. peoples. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming by. This was fun. It was the cloacas. It was. It was all about the cloacas. I'm all Wait, about did, the did cloacas. Wait, did you keep part of the uh, the intro? I don't know if I did. Did we talk? I don't know if we actually talked about the cloacas while recording. <laughs> no, I think the bird people thing was previously. Uh, previous to the recording. It should still be on the Twitch vid, though, if you want to clip yeah. it. If you want to clip it. Because why not? All right, we here should. we go. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Professional. <laughs> Oh, I didn't. No, it's not the whole promo. I didn't write anything about Jerry. Okay, well, never mind. We'll just do thank you, thank yous, and all that stuff. All right, here we go. Okay, we're good. Five, four, yeah, I hate you. All right, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> that was a good time talking to Jerry. He was amazing. Uh, it's been a long time we've wanted to chit chat with him about all the things he's doing. If uh, if you wanted to see his stuff, man, subscribe to Politics Politics. I hate you. You just you you're. You're killing me. I didn't, I didn't say anything. No, it's because everything I'm saying sounds slightly lewd and perverse, and you're catching okay. on to it every okay. time. Okay. Um, okay. No, we but, we so got this. Here's the thing. I need you to because I don't want to sound lewd and perverse. <laughs> so that's the thing. That's what, okay. okay. There we go. <clears throat> it's such happy music, and it's just jacking me up. Do, 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 do. <sighs> Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> um, all right. Five, four, three, two, one. That was Justin Robert Young here on Creator Crush. I had a great time talking to him. It was fun. Dag on it. I need to write this down. I can't. I can't do this. <laughs> Can we just like stitch all these cuts together and have that be the intro? <laughs> Do, 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 do. It's like it's farting candy cane. I know. I'm like, hey, it's candy cane time. Do, 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 do. All right. There we go. I'm done okay. trying anymore. Um, why don't you do it? Okay. I'm scared for you to do it. You, yeah. You, 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 okay. Here we go. If I mess it up, we can do it again. You you do it. Five, four, three, two, one. Wait, is this the intro? No, we're doing the outro. Oh, okay. Is that why things aren't making any sense to you? Nothing ever makes sense to me. Okay, yeah, this is outro. Okay. This is like the wrap up, and then okay. we'll, we'll promote the next show because we know who's coming Forest on next all, week. Little, okay. Yeah, and we can read the the thing for that, right? But the 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 just that was a good time. Huge thanks to Jury for coming out, and um. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. Okay. Okay. I can, I can do this. Yeah. Right. Go I got this. It. Okay. I'm gonna I'm a school you son. <laughs> yeah, you're the better, you're the more professional one of us. Oh yeah. <laughs> Here we go. In five, four, three, two, one. Huge thanks to Justin Robert Young for coming and hanging out and not blocking me on every social media site that we have. Because Lord knows you deserved it. Probably. <laughs> Yeah, that was a great time. We had a blast. Next week on Creator Crush, we are going to have Horace Holloway, alt-country musician, who we're really excited to talk about. We've known him for years on Twitter, but would really love to talk to him in person. Uh, he's going to be on the show to talk about his music, touring with Space Ghost, uh, George Lowe, uh, if you're a fan of Space Ghost Coast to Coast, and yeah. it's going to be a blast. I can't wait to dive in to all the stories about his music and where it's taken him, because he has been on some journeys. Uh, if you like what we're doing, you can do a couple things to help us out. Uh, tip us a buck or two at twodorks.net slash tip. You can subscribe to our channel on Twitch by visiting uh, twodorks.net and hitting the subscribe button. If you have an Amazon Prime subscription, we get a little bit of money for that, and it's free for you to subscribe with that. Bezos bucks work for us. Uh, Yay. Or if you don't have any money, it would help us out enormously if you would uh, review our show on the podcasting service of choice for you, whether that's uh, Stitcher or iTunes or wherever that you find the show. iTunes, I think we're still waiting to get in the directory because they're a bunch of butts. But Anchor FM is amazing. Anchor.fm, if you have the Anchor app, give us some applause because that would be rad. Just uh, in general, tell your friends. Uh, Creator.crush.com. Telling your friends about the show is going to be the best. Thank you guys for hanging with us, and we'll see you next time on Creator Crush. Tinky Tinky nice. Show is Tinky. We did it. Now I got to go back to <laughs> forty forty four when it cut out, and I was just like, "Everybody gone, everybody gone." Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I think it was forty forty four. I tried to remember. Lord knows I should have written it down, but I didn't have a, a pad of paper. Let's see. Skype, How do you not have Skype copious broke. amounts of paper so, around your desk? You're a notebook hoarder like I am.
I know. I should. I don't. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, shoot. Skype Skype broke. <laughs> Skype Skype broke. Whoopsie. All right, here we go. Let me... Creator.crush.com. Is that what we said? No, I don't think so. I said Creator Crush, right? I don't know. Did somebody Safe say? Said. Was, was it, did, we, did we say? What? No, I didn't. <laughs> it's okay. Nobody listens that far anyway. Roll that tape, Aaron. I'll roll it. I'll roll it. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Where did I say that? Let's go back here, creatorcrush.com. iTunes or wherever that you find the show. iTunes, I think we're still waiting to get in the directory because they're a bunch of butts. But Anchor FM is amazing. But Anchor.fm, if you have the Anchor app, give us some applause because that would be rad. Just uh, in general, tell your friends. Uh, creator.crush.com. Tell I did. I said creator.crush.com. <laughs> Thank you, Safeo. Nobody listens that far. You're right. I F it. I'm not going to fix that. <laughs> I got other things to fix right now. I got to fix this stupid bleep in the middle. But you know what I'm going to put in there? It's gonna be, You're going to think I'm a genius. I'm going to put the Batman transition sound in there. Ooh. You know this thing? Oops. This thing. Yay. And then it'll clear itself up. It's fine. Okay. Edit. Track. Split. How do I split? Edit. Label audio. Select. Split. Split things, clip boundaries. Ah, split. There we go. I'm going to shove a little Batman transition in there. I'll shoot fire. Shoot fire. Save matches. There's like signs for flow that have boarded up on stuff at the beach that says flow away. <laughs> well, well done. Well done, people of people of North Carolina. All right, here we go. Just going to hit this button. There we go. That should fix it. Let's see. Yay. Papa Roach is still a thing. Oh, that put it at the end. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> Podcasting is fun. Podcasting is hard. He he was right. Like, if you're... Because I remember when I would stream during the middle of the day because I want to start that up again, which I shouldn't be talking about because you told me to shut the crap up. Um, <laughs> yeah, but right. just, yeah, having to chit-chat with yourself and have it flow naturally... It's easier when you're doing something, though, and you're not just looking at a camera and going, oh, my God, topics come to my head. Oh, you're right. Like, I I remember, you remember when I was doing the Steven show for a little while, and yeah. I would I would record it in the car with my little Zoom recorder, and oh. it was it was challenging because you're like, am I saying anything coherent? Have I? But he's right. You got to be really sure about your opinions yeah. because there's nobody echoing back that that was wrong. It's, it's actually kind of freeing because you don't, you can just say what you're thinking, and you don't have then to worry. Then you know immediately if you actually think that what you thought was correct, because you will either backtrack or go with it. Yeah, you'll be like, this was a bad idea, <clears throat> but it's fine. Yeah. All right, there we go. Now I got my now I got my sound. Now, Papa Roach is not coming to North Carolina. Sin. Ding. Does anyone care? I don't know. I Aren't they the cut my life into pieces thing? Cut my life into pizza. This is my plastic fork. <laughs> is that a thing? That's the best thing ever. Skype broke. Ah, what is that from? So, your head? Just be willing to change. Huh? Yeah, no. That I, I heard that somewhere. I'm not that funny. Yeah, you are. Oh, uh, maybe sometimes. All right, saving project. I'm gonna save it because I'm terrified I'm gonna lose it. That was a good shit. That was fun. That was awesome. I'm I glad. Like I, yeah, that was really great. I'm glad you were persistent as well because that worked out. Clearly, that your persistence is the name of the game. Yeah, it was like because I like I wasn't obnoxious, but I I was nipping at his heels for what the last three weeks. It's been pretty. Yeah, we, it's been last month. Maybe I really did so much. Since my, maybe was, two, three weeks before Dragon Con, because our original questioning was going to be like, what's the what's the name uh, of the game uh, for the, the hold final... on. My my text messages on Twitter with him scroll Here up for like five, July twenty third one. July 23rd. So a month and a half I've been messaging that poor man. <laughs> and he said thank you. Like what? I know. What kind of psycho? Well, so the thing is, remember I told you I said I feel like he has my brain and he gets excited and wants to do something and then he gets closer to it and he's like, why did I agree to this? Yeah, what have I done? Yeah, I. so I'm just like it's cool. I'll just make him feel bad as a human for letting me down, and he'll do it because that's what I would do. <laughs> that actually, that that sounds about right. Yeah, you failed me. 
But yeah, like you three, make me sad. Two, I really was one. like crying, and I smudged my uh, mascara that I'm gonna wipe off my face in like five uh, seconds. So who gives a crap? It was really funny. Like it, I that was good. <laughs> You're like, was, oh. but I should have just been like, and when the wiener went in, you know, like because you it was that overtly sexual. The things I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's just, and then we I had the giggles so it made it even worse because then I laugh <laughs> my head hurts all right episode five okay load I uh, feel like that made you super happy because like Jerry's one of your guys oh uh, yeah like a podcast podcast hero right mm-hmm. we just need to get Schwood what we should do is get hit with Schwood and then at some point get him and Schwood at the same time and they can just be idiots <laughs> we just let them have it like here so talk about how much fun you have with things bye yeah. Yeah. <laughs> best of luck no it was fun um it was cool because it there was so much he had so much there you know between the the stories about inmates traveling across the country in vans that's awful like, somebody actually posted a a link to that in the the chat about someone being stuck in the van for eight weeks and there's like human feces in the van and oh my gosh somebody in the chat i was trying to 